We're sitting at Bubbles of Dam. I was hoping to find a leopard laying on the banks. But that's not what we found. We found a hippo in the water instead. It's good to see that at least one hippopotamus has decided to come back to Bubbles of Dam because it has been empty for the last couple of days now. And not even the Egyptian geese were here. It's like uh, the hippo and the Egyptian geese have an amazing relationship together and they refuse to inhibit the dam without one another. That's obviously not true, but it's just a coincidence. Because I've come past here the last few days and there's been absolutely, absolutely nothing. The Egyptian geese have actually just moved off just to the corner. And they seem to be wading in the water at the moment. Uh, to the right. Keep going, keep going. To the right, 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 right. You'll get them now. There they are. Just feeding in the water at the moment. Got their heads underneath. A little one. See how they're using their feet to stir up the mud? Isn't that cool? And then they pop their heads down and they sort of are siphoning through the water. And you're getting lots of delicious things to eat, but there are grazers too. They prefer to eat grass when it is out and when it is available, but at this time of the year, the short green grass that they like, and they almost feed on the same length of grass as wildebeest do. But there isn't any of that for them to eat, so they'll change their diet slightly and feed on the things that are living in the dam. Always making noise. They're very sort of um, chatty birds. They're obviously constantly reassuring each other that they're around, strengthening the bond. Egyptian geese are again monogamous too. And you see that looks like the male, that one there, that's doing all the talking. He looks very busy. But Buffles Dam is... Buffles Hook Dam, not Buffles Dam. <laughs> Buffles Hook Dam is a beautiful spot. And hopefully we're going to see lots of animals wallowing in this water as it starts to dry up. There are not many places left now that have water in it. Now, Paul, you're wondering why are they called Egyptian geese? Well, it's not because they're from Egypt. It's because of their markings, and this is what I've heard and read. They've got um, a very Egyptian-like makeup around their eyes and their colorings. So that's where they, the reason why they say they have that name. And fair enough. I just love this little movement that they're doing with their feet at the moment. They're sort of doing a bit of a tap dance underwater, like I said, stirring um, all sorts of things up that are at the bottom of the water. The, obviously, all that sediment must have lots of little nutrients and things. must be some microorganisms that we obviously can't see that they're feeding on. But again, it's nice to be able to feed on a variety of different things and be limited. Let me. Oh, right, let's very quickly go across to Byron.